MC Strix and you're listening to the sounds of the Glow Kid with the Generation X radio show, people. Make some noise. This man has come all the way from Greece. All the way from Athens. Glow Kid, Glow Kid, legend, legend. My poor food brother. Generation X. Www.nightforce.radio.com We're here to force you to have fun. Generation X. Generation X. Generation X. This is Generation X. Boys and girls, the new generation. Call it generation of love. Boys and girls, the new generation. Call it generation of love. Fellas, all night for screw, all your next crew. Passionate hardcore people. All started mid uh, 2017 and still running. He has learned the way of the ninja. An amazing hardcore event with young people and dinosaurs, as well as uh, a seriously. Masterpiece of an album coming out uh, on the same imprint, uh, which is uh, Calling the Hardcore Volume 1. We're gonna play all tunes from there. Let's do this!
Drop it, drop it. Personal highlights during this year. Pride uh, for our scene. With the likes of LSD, Kizzy, Damaging, Dave Skywalker, Tri Unity System, and Serize, DJ Genta, Inner Core, Ron Wells, Black Mass, uh, Plastics, Nervous and Actions. Warned today of the unprecedented threat posed by the drug SC. Ultra Stamp by a stunning. Uh, Record sleeve artwork by the legendary junior Tomlin, graphic designer, uh, concept artist, uh, as well as design consultant. A legend who has uh, put his own mark at their works with uh, Kicking Records, uh, Renegade, Soundwave, The Scientist, uh, Messiah, Ratback, and many, many more others uh, back in the day. So yeah, remain on Night Force Radio. Because uh, for the next 80 minutes, you listen to my exclusive uh, interviews with uh, DJ Jedi, Kizzy. Both of these interviews uh, were made during uh, Calling the Hardcore Volume 4 event. And 
And after that, closing with uh, my new interview, fresh interview, phone call interview with uh, the man behind it, Radio Sam, Sammy Barcel. A hardworking and versatile uh, music personality who runs uh, Calling the Hardcore, Rave Radio Records, and of course, uh, Try Unity. information more education I'd say
before heading to my recorded interviews during uh, Calling the Heart Volume 4 with uh, Jenda and Kizzy. And the recording is head honcho. Hi, this is Dave Skywalker, you're listening to Glow Kid on Generation X. I'm just going outside to wax the ground. <laughs> anyway, that is the end. Stay updated with all the latest glow news. Generation X radio show. Prodigy fanboy and strictly new school blog. www.glowkidmusic.blogspot.com My name's MC Emerson Allen. And I'm DJ Lipmaster Mark. And together we're known as the Rat Pack. And you're in tune with who? Generation X and DJ Glow Kid. That's right, Generation X and DJ Glow Kid. Pick up your chest. <laughs>
one of the most established, powerful, talented, down to earth, uh, great producers, uh, radio DJs, label managers, DJ Gentai Ed has put an essential work uh, within the scene, especially the last decade. Hello, Ed. Pleased to meet you. Hey, good to be here. Thank you. So I'm referring to the last decade of your uh, work mainly because of the birth of your label Jedi Recordings as well as being actually the, re the reason sure. that uh, Night Force is back on vinyl since uh, 2016. What would you say about it? Yeah, that's right. So as you, uh, you know, I've been doing new, uh, new old school hardcore breakbeat music for a long time, but it's only really the last few years that it's become viable again. You know, I, um, I, I stopped about uh, back in 2007 because the sales were just di uh, diving, but now it, it's come back again. So uh, yeah, everyone's happy. Actually, I want you, if you can, to tell me the background story of uh, what you were the one who persuaded, let's say, in quotation Mark Lunacy, yeah, for yeah, yeah. the revival, for the rebirth, actually. That's right. Yeah. So, so the way it came about is I, I was, I, I got married about two years ago, and I was on my honeymoon, uh, reading his book, and I'd, I'd never talked to Chris before. I was obviously a big fan of his music, and I read his autobiography while I was on holiday, and I thought, wow, this guy sounds really sound. You know, I, I'll drop him a, me a message, see if he's a uh, interested in doing a remix for me <laughs> so um, he did a remix for me everything was good and then um, I asked him if he was up for re repressing some old stuff and he said yeah great let's do take me away let's do six days and I said no no one's interested in that stuff you know everyone's already got those let's do the more obscure underground stuff and he was he, he had no idea that anyone wanted it so um, that, that's basically how it started I, I went to the, him with the idea of uh, repressing some of the more obscure Night Force tracks and uh, yeah, he, he was really surprised by how well they sold. And now let's take uh, things back to 2011 and uh, your label, Jedi Recordings. How you set up the label, you know, the decision, how you came up with this decision? Yeah, so, so it, uh, I've said this a few times, it didn't really start as a label. The idea was I'd, I'd made four tracks over a few years that I just wanted to release on a record. Uh, so I just called it Jedi One, assuming that was going to be the only one. And then a few years later, it took me it took me three years to sell a hundred copies of that record. So it was a really bad seller, which is uh, you know quite quite funny looking back on it now. But yeah, it took me a really long time to sell all a hundred copies of that first release. And eventually I sold them all, which uh, and then decided to do the next one. And luckily uh, that that was in 2014, and that was when vinyl started to pick up again. So uh, luckily the second release sold quite quickly and that's why it started basically. So yeah, there was, there was never a grand idea to have a Jedi recordings. It just started off as one white label and then went from there. Any hint about uh, the forthcoming release? I know this is something on Facebook, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, I can give you a yes. Remixes. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So it's called Night Force Remixes. So it's a four track EP of some of my old tracks remixed by Night Force artists. I can't say which ones yet, but Brilliant. yeah, okay, I'll, I'll release it next week. Brilliant. So, uh, your thoughts about the current status of hardcore? Uh, what do you think is missing uh, to get it, let's, let's say, to another level, or is it in healthy condition? What do you think? Yeah, I, I think it's going really well. But something a few of the other producers have said is that people need to stop buying the represses and start buying the new music because represses are great, but unless people buy the new music, it's it's not going anywhere. You know, it's uh, it, it'd be really nice to see people support the the new releases as well as the represses. Uh, do you think that uh, the resampling? You know, the, this whole recycled, let's say, in quotation yes, mark yeah. thing uh, has destroyed hardcore, is helpful to our scene? Yeah. No, I think that's fine. You know, I, I, the, the idea with my tracks has always been to make a record I can play that, that would fit seamlessly in a 92 or 93 set. So I don't think it's a problem to make music that sounds old. It's, it's, uh, there's so much variety in hardcore. I think you can make tracks that sound authentic and fresh still. So entering now the chapter Calling the Hardcore because we are uh, in Brighton, we are outside of uh, Calling the Hardcore uh, Volume 4 for the interview. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you have uh, co-worked, you set up actually the first one with uh, some parcel from Tri Unity and the That's whole right. uh, project of uh, Calling the Hardcore is still running. And uh, what's your opinion about uh, this fresh air breathing in uh, Brighton, you know, the hardcore air? Yeah, I, I, it, was, it was much needed. So I, I moved to Brighton about four years ago now. It's got a really great music scene. But there's lots of lots of jungle, lots of drum and bass. The one thing that was missing was a proper hardcore night. So that's that's what Sammy and I decided to do. Um, originally, it was just going to be a one-off event, which we did and went very well. 
Um, as you may have seen, I've, I had a, a son recently, so I don't have the time to commit to a regular event. So yeah, I handed the reins over to Sammy. Can you give some credits, uh, some thumbs up to all uh, Brighton-based producers of hardcore? Or oh, exactly. Yeah, that was always our idea to give, to give names. Lo- yeah, give uh, Keezy's great. Um, yeah, Clinch uh, lo- love her set. So yeah, it, the, the, there's lots of talented people down here, and we're trying to give them all uh, a platform to again not just play jungle, which is what they all get booked for already, but to play hardcore. Brilliant, sir. Now I would like to send to ask you uh, any message to the old school uh, crew or uh, the youth actually listening to this show. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it's great. That, that I love coming to these events and I see people aged from 20 to 50 raving to break beat hardcore still. So yeah, just thank you. Thank, thanks for still supporting it. Thanks for buying the new music. And um, yeah, uh, as I said, if you can just buy some of the new music, hopefully this will continue. And your advice to the new school producers or anyone who would like to start, let's say, a tune? Um, uh, trust me, I, I'm a terrible producer. I've got, I've got no idea what I'm doing. So just have a go and put out a record. I, I disagree. I, 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 I can't stress how important it is to put out a vinyl release because there's, trust me, having tried, there is no money in digital. So if you want to, if you want to make uh, make your money back or um, have have a viable label, you need to do vinyl. So that, that's my advice. Thumbs up, big up, massive respect to DJ Gentai, guys, a down to earth guy, I've just met him and uh, I have to say only good words, seriously, <laughs> big up man. Cheers man, thank you. Yes, this is Keezy and you're listening to Glow Kid on the Generation X radio show.
All right, guys. Calling the Hardcore Volume 4 in Brighton and uh, a massive set has just finished from uh, Kizzy, a local uh, producer uh, and uh, label manager of Broken Beats Records. Uh, he, he's it's here next to me and uh, he has lots to say about his set, about calling the Hardcore events, about everything. Kizzy, big up for your sets, man. Amazing selection, amazing mixing. Big up, seriously. Uh, thank you very much, Glowkid. It's lovely to meet you as well. Like We've been friends on Facebook a long time, and you've supported my stuff for a long time. It's lovely to meet you, like uh, all the way from Greece as well. Um, yeah, just finished my set, had a wicked time. Crowd was really responsive. The uh, I wanted to play an old school set. Not often that I play old school hardcore. I usually play sort of jungles, what I'm known for, you know? And uh, the last few events I played here, I played new school breakbeat, so like breakbeat hardcore of the sort of post 2000, 2010 onwards. So for this one, I went full on 92, 93, and um, sort of tried to play tunes that I haven't heard many people play a lot, if you know what I mean. Yeah, so well, I'm saying I'm, uh, I used to listen to your sets, and they were more junglistic. But yeah. this one is uh, it was a rough breakbeat, mate. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah, no, nice one. I, uh, I I properly love my hardcore, you know, but I don't often play it because. As, as I say, I'm known for jungle, so that's what I get booked for. But Sammy, Radio Sam, that runs Calling the Hardcore, I mean, he's been a proper supporter of me since we only met last year. And since then, I've played every Calling the Hardcore. He's recently put me on his LP, uh, the Calling the Hardcore Volume 1, which is out of this world amazing, you know? Like, to be amongst those artists, etc. And I got to play my tune in this set as well. First time I played it out. Um, which uh, which was amazing. Again, crowd response on that was amazing. Do you think that this new edition of Calling the Hardcore was the most, uh, let's say, the biggest one actually? The biggest response, the biggest support from the masses. I've seen all around me young faces. There are no 40s or 50s uh, guys or uh, dinosaurs or whatever guys. There are young guys in front of us. It, it's amazing. Amazing feeling, seriously. Yeah, definitely. Different ages. Different countries, amazing. Yeah, no, definitely, I fully agree. And uh, and that's what's great about this event. It brings so many different people together. And, you know, you don't have trouble, you don't have anything. It's just happy, smiley people just wanting to have a good night. And um, this event was the first one I played upstairs for the Calling the Hardcore. Usually I do downstairs and do the new school breakbeat hardcore. But, um, yeah, so it was my first chance to play upstairs, Calling the Hardcore, main room. And, yeah, proper amazing, like, loved it. <laughs> we good. What about your uh, label? Let's focus on that. Yeah. Uh, well, Broken Beats, I mean, I've only had one release on it, and uh, that was at the end of 2016 now. 2017, I just didn't feel enthusiastic about writing at that time, so I just... Uh, your aim is to sign any artist, maybe, well, let's say... Potentially. For the moment, I'm going to... You make a call now. Well, yeah, for the moment I'm going to, because I've, I've written an, e uh, an EP, I've got an EP ready for it, um, which I was going to do this year, but um, I've decided to put it off till next year now, so... Digital one? Uh, no, vinyl it will be. Vinyl, wicked. Although uh, certain people will uh, get a digital version of it, like, you know, my true supporters like yourself. Um, Cheers, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll be popping a few digital copies out to a few people. But yeah, primarily it'll be vinyl to begin with. And, uh, and then we'll see how it goes with digital down the line. Um, but yeah. <laughs> so um, you can see that vinyl sales are, uh, are rolling, right? Goes yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, thing. definitely. Well, I mean, especially with Jungle, which was the EP will be Jungle, although there might be a hardcore tune on it. I'm undecided about that yet. Um, but uh, I mean, Jungle is so sort of huge and strong at the moment. Wait, is, so. it, is it a type of revival? Is it a type of uh, continuation? This whole thing, this whole movement of hardcore. What yeah. do you think? I think it's amazing. It's just continued or it's a recycled thing? Yeah, it does feel like a cycle, you know, because um, obviously in the mid-2000s, 2005, 6, 7, you had um, a lot of labels like Warehouse, um, like uh, Harpoor Projects and uh, was it Warehouse Wax and things like that. And, uh, you know, there was a really good breakbeat hardcore scene around that mid-2000 time. But then that did dwindle off a little bit for a, for a while. But it seems to have come back. You've got, obviously, Seduction, who played tonight. He's just re, uh, relaunched his label, 21st Century Impact, I think he's calling it. Yeah. And a uh, couple of wicked tunes, a couple of remixes on there as well. So, yeah, it does feel like it's coming back again. And calling the hardcore is really, I feel like, 
It's, it's a bit like a little mini centre, you know, for, for hardcore down here on the south coast. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's amazing great. what you provide and uh, worth to mention that you're from here, you live here, yeah. and uh, you know better things here, what's happening and what people listen, but you try to, you try a new, let's say, trend. No trend, no trend. A new kind of direction, maybe. Wrong yeah. word, direction. Well, I mean, hopefully, like, uh, I mean, Brighton does have a good jungle scene and it's got a good drum and bass scene and things like that, but hardcore, not so much, you know? You have little bits here and there, but it's not proper, like, proper nights. Calling the hardcore is the first one, obviously, Radio Sam and Jedi, they, um, their idea was to bring a proper hardcore night to the south coast, and uh, and I feel like they've accomplished it definitely. massively. Like you know? Definitely, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So last bit, uh, you've made the, you featured the tune on uh, the calling calling the hardcore first ever compilation, which is called Bad. Yeah. <laughs> and it's yeah. freaking amazing, guys. Like the whole compilation, of course. Yeah. Uh, what about your tune, the progress? How long did it take? And um, that tune, well, it's actually something I started. Um, with the idea of doing a hardcore EP at some point, and that was earlier this year. And I kind of didn't, uh, I kind of didn't continue with the tune, but it was there, you know, just the kind of like almost like a banker, but it was just very basic at that point in time. And then when Sammy um, approached me about did I want to do a tune for the LP, I thought, well, I've got just the perfect tune, which I've started, so I knew I had something to kick off with. And uh, yeah, I spent. Well, my girlfriend went away for a couple of weekends, so it gave me a good chance to get a proper in the zone, you know? And uh, so I spent a good solid two two weeks on it, really solid on it, you know? Two to three weeks, um, the weekends, and uh, I have a day off midweek. So yeah, about two to three weeks. When I reveal you now that uh, this is my one of my top five releases of uh, this year, seriously. Oh, amazing, yeah, amazing, I, amazing. I, I agree, like, I mean, not for myself, but a big for project, the, man. But yeah, exactly, you know, Sammy is really, he's gone there, you know, he's gone out there and he's he's put a lot of money forward in the first place. And, um, and like, I really hope it pays off because it is a great LP. The artwork by Junior Tomlin, the artists, obviously you've got Ron Wells and LSD have got a bit on there, and there's some great art artists on there that I've been buying their record for years, you know, and I've got a record with them, it's just amazing. Definitely. Yeah, it's such a great LP. So, your advice to anyone who wants to start a hardcore produ production or uh, whatever into hardcore? Yeah, go for it. If you're into hardcore, um, because I, I feel like if you're going to write, write music, You've got to love that music, you know, and uh, so if you do love your hardcore, there's plenty of production um, suites out there, like Doors, DAWs out there, like I'm on Cubase, but there are many other options out there, and Valley options as well, which do just as good a job. So yeah, without a doubt, it's it's not hard, like I work all software, I don't use any hardware at all, um, so I write everything in the box, if you know what I mean, and I, uh, yeah, I, I do think that, you know, if you've got a passion for it, then yeah, go for it, definitely. And like, especially now, you know, the heart goes on the rise again. So. That's one, mate. Big up again for your uh, amazing set, blinding <laughs> set. <laughs> and a uh, pleasure to catch you, catching you up, yeah, meeting you in person. Yeah, no, pleasure to meet you, man. Super respect, Chris. Yeah, no, thank you very much. And thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us as well.
This is the Strict School Vault with exclusive interviews, track reviews, free tunes and exclusive tunes to give away, mixes and information on events. www.strictlynewschool.blogspot.com is where it's at. You know it makes sense. Guys, uh, we were outside from uh, the Volks Club for uh, these interviews. Finland uh, chapter. The legendary duet of uh, nervous and anxious. <laughs> Most of you, you do remember uh, the classic uh, hardcore breaks mid uh, zero zero with uh, Mertworks hardcore projects. Speech control records and many more others.
might sound a little bit simple, but it's so addictive. True addiction. Pick up uh, seriously Black Mass uh, Plastics and the uh, Bass Rock. new level called uh, Not From This World Recordings. The Mystic Essence uh, two-track EP is uh, available on Bandcamp.
Amado raving over those productions. Big up. Do not worry at all, guys, because I will feature. Uh, associated links of each act uh, later on when the show will be uploaded you may follow my website of course clock it music.blogspot.com Now to my uh, last chapter, the last chapter of tonight's uh, Generation Exodus show, special on uh, Night Force Radio. Massive pickups all listeners worldwide, the all silent uh, active crew, chatroom crew. All of you are glowing. After all uh, listeners from my UK, Greece, Japan, Serbia, Bolivia, Sweden, US, Latvia, Russia, Ukraine, Canada, Spain, Australia, Finland, Germany, Hungary, Hill, Netherlands, Iceland, Poland, Switzerland. There's a few countries that show appreciation, show love uh, on Gen X all of the of the, these years. See, I'm losing my words. This is Eamon from Liquid. You are listening to the one and only Glow Kid. Hi, this is Dave Skywalker. You're listening to Glow Kid on Generation X Radio Show. Hallo, hier ist Imperial aus Deutschland. Und ihr hört gerade Glow Kid mit seiner Generation X Show live. This is Enzyme, and you're listening to Glow Kid's Generation X Radio Show. This is Koshti, and you're listening to Glow Kid on Generation X. This is DJ Lunacy from Night Force Records, and you are listening to Glow Kid on his Generation X Show. Hi, this is Neft here, and you're listening to Glow Kid's Generation X Show. Oi, oi, vibes here. Don't forget the Generation X radio show with the best music for the best people. Playing rocking sound for rocking crews. Oi, oi, vibesy. Keep it locked on. Hey, this is Marusha from Berlin City in Germany. And you are listening to Glow Kit on Generation X radio show. Spreading love and have loads of fun. I have a dream. Just love, peace and unity. Because we're calling the hardcore. Oh. Just, uh, just, uh, w, 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 <laughs> dot, nice, force, radio, dot, 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 open your mind, it's time to activate, open your mind, your soul will elevate, open your mind, 
It's time to activate. Open your mind. Your soul will elevate. Open your mind. Generation X to the show, calling the hardcore special, and on the phone is the man behind this remarkable celebration of hardcore uh, breakbeat, and of course Rave Madness, it's uh, Radio Sam, hello Sammy! Hey Doe Kid, how you doing man? All fine, hope you're well as well. Very good, very good. So, uh, some weeks ago we've uh, overcome the bad weather, in other words, the hardcore weather I'd say, for a massive hardcore event, right? Uh, your thoughts about the fourth uh, chapter of Calling the Hardcore? Yeah, I mean, Glow Kid, you know, as well as I do, like you just mentioned, the weather was certainly not on our side for number four, which was really interesting because we've never had that kind of weather all year, really. And then on the night of the event, we were hit by the most torrential storm that hit the south coast. And it probably started at around 7, 8 p.m., and as a promoter, you, you're at the club at like 8 p.m. and you've got everything set up and all you can see is horizontal rain going sideways with not a shadow of anyone in sight. You know, even like the, the Brighton Pier, I think, had closed. So it was almost like it was this sort of Texas uh, western of just everything gone into shutdown all around the club. So I'm standing there thinking, right, What's going to happen here? Uh, are we going to get 100 people through the door? Are we going to, what's going to happen? But either way, I just had in my mind, you know, it was going to be, uh, uh, you know, a great vibe nonetheless. Um, from my perspective, look, number four was probably my favourite from the first one um, for a few reasons. Um, you know, it kicked off at 10 p.m. Uh, we, we in the main room we kicked off with some 91 underground hardcore and it went into some 92 Jedi came on at midnight to really go underground further that was just fantastic Strict really held himself on the mic yet again like he does at every single event then at one o'clock we we had the DJ SS um, who was one Massive of our session. special yeah. yeah special guests surprised us all um, where he came and bought lots of uh, classics in, mm. in his selection. Um, I listened to his setback uh, this week, and I think he played about six Formation Records tracks. So uh, to get to, to get six Formation Records tracks out of that man is is definitely something. Um, it wasn't the whole set of Formation. But it certainly worked. I've spoken to loads of people about the night, and they just said it. It just it just went off. Whether he Definitely. played, 
definitely work, a well worked set from uh, DJSS, uh, Seduction, and all these guys. Can you tell me some of your, uh, when you offered, let's say, when you booked uh, SS or Seduction, uh, how, and you told them, you know, about the spirit of calling the hardcore, how they reacted? Positively, is firstly, you know, um, I originally spoke to, to John Seduction, um, sort of said, look, this is, this is the event. It's an underground old school hardcore event in room one, but we're also pushing new music in room two. Um, but what I wanted uh, John to do, because obviously he started to um, make new music, is to, to push some of his new new stuff in, in, the, in, the, in room one as well, alongside his, his original Impact Records. So it was an Impact Records versus a 21st Century Impact Records. And, Seduction was really positive about playing, he couldn't wait, um, he did a lot of talking before before the event, uh, he was like, you sure you want me to do an Impact Records thing? And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely positive, you have to trust me. Um, and, I, and part of it is I'm trying to instill some confidence that this isn't just an anthem rave. Um, classics and anthems have their part in the scene, they always will and always have. But calling the hardcore isn't that, it's about artists giving them the license, DJs giving them the license to dig that bit deeper, you know, go into what they did, whether they are one of the, the headliners such as SS and Seduction, to do what they did back in 91, in 92, when they were given the dubs, when they were given white labels, delve back into that. Um, Seduction and SS, you know, I said to SS, you know, it'd be great if you did a formation records thing, but see how you feel. And he did just that, you know, he played everything from Joey Beltram, Energy Flash, Outlander, yeah. The Vamp, <laughs> uh, you know, through to, um, you know, uh, some Tango remixes on Formation Records, uh, yeah. Grand National, you know, so he, he went across the whole board and, you know, to watch him do that and to get his feedback to say he really enjoyed it as well. It was fantastic. And you don't really see SS on that many lineups. Um, he's predominant the drum and bass, but it, it was an unexpected know, set. Seriously, yeah, it was. It was unexpected. It was unexpected. Um, but it worked, and it, um, it, 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 everyone who I've spoken to uh, really enjoyed it. And that's the main thing. As long as the people that come through the door enjoy it. Then, then that's the main thing. I will uh, open you my heart now to tell you that uh, I'm one of those who lived it up directly and uh, all night long, of course, with a bright smile. Alongside, of course, many others next to me and uh, all around me, young people. I I've noticed too many young faces. Uh, some, it's, it's amazing, seriously. You have put something very fresh in Brighton. Furthermore, furthermore uh, within the scene. Uh, how do you feel about it? Yeah, good. I mean, to me, it, you know, I think I've mentioned this before that calling the hardcore isn't an old school rave. It's not an old school rave. It's a rave that plays hardcore music that is original hardcore music from 19, from 91 onwards. And it's new hardcore music and it's new jungle techno, which in my mind falls under that hardcore umbrella. So I'm trying to push the new sound as well as the original sound and I feel that if you do that it opens up the doors to attract more of a diverse um, a diverse raver you know rave goer so um, but in terms of like the Brighton scene you know what we're, what we're doing with calling the hardcore is it is attracting those that were raving back in the day it's attracting those that were there in the revival in the late 90s of old school hardcore um, but it's also where the club that we've got the residency at is it is a catchment. You know, they've got a huge following. It's a very underground club for Volks. It's an institution for underground music in Brighton and South Coast. But also um, we're, we're, we're you know we're like a thousand meters away from uh, maybe lower, maybe like five hundred meters away from another big club called the Concord Two. So you get an influx of, of people that that not necessarily have gone out to your rave but have come to your rave at three o'clock in the morning and they're there still to, to enjoy it and they're up for it and they've heard about it but they weren't necessarily come out at the start so we did we had a big influx of different people of all ages at the start and then we had a massive influx of people from 
from three in the morning right through to five in the morning yeah. where some of the other clubs kicked out because we went on until six in the morning but really happy that that's that it's appealing to, to to lots of different people and that makes puts a massive smile on my face um, <laughs> knowing that you know you've got this happy yeah. yeah you've got this generations that are like you know from 18 years old right through to, to people in their 50s why not you know it's it's great some people come from 10 p.m. till 1 in the morning some people come from 3 in the morning till 6 in the morning so it's kind of you know it's catering for for everyone but everyone's there to have uh, that rave unity feel <laughs> and in addition to all this we have uh, calling the hardcore volume one uh, one of the proudest uh, projects from ya 12 fresh slammers by old school uh, versus new school leaders uh, of the hardcore scene uh, Ron Wells, LSD, Damaging, Dave Skywalker, Sistex, Arise, Kizzy, Tri Unity, your band, Nervous and Taxus, uh, Jedi, and many, many more others. Uh, it's an amazing. Mass Plastics. Yeah, yeah, I'm uh, yeah. having uh, overdose. Amazing effort. And uh, how hard is sorting out such a huge release of course uh, junior tomlin on the artwork so how yeah. hard is was your whole effort yeah it's 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 been an effort like most certainly um i've never i've only done i've only released music wherever i've released it as my own ep or my own single or another person has asked me for a track on their ep or their album so to go and do a collaboration album like this kind of felt I knew what what was required you know it's a new everyone on that list of people that you just ruled out then they've all released on their own labels or they've been asked to release on other labels so they they understand you know what it's like when you have to say um, I'm, I'm looking to get the the lacquers cut by this date can you get the tracks back to us by that date um, can you bounce it down in this format? Um, you know, you arrange the cut, uh, you arrange the artwork, you arrange the layout designer. It's it's all just a project, really. And I suppose coming from a project management background, it, it, it kind of just sort of followed suit with that. As long as you've got your spreadsheet, you know, with all your tabs and all of your plans and, and everything, then you, you're not, you know, it, it kind of just helped. And you know, all the guys on on it have, have been wicked just constantly in com conversation during the process with it, making sure that comms is all good. Um, and yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a, you know, it, with it being like a passion project, it, it doesn't, doesn't feel like it's, it's hard. Yeah, it, 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 it feels like it's what, what was meant to happen. And, um, you know, when you're putting together lineups and you're speaking to lots of people for, for event lineups, you know, putting a lineup together for an album is, is very similar. Um, you know, you talk about the time scales, you talk about you know, when things need to be done, what, what's the style going to be, you know, what genre of music are you going to play at this event? It's like, what sort of style do you want me to, to make for the album? So it's lots of, lots of crossover. Um, and it's still not done as well, you know. So you mentioned the album, it is only on pre-order still. Um, and we are receiving. Uh, it's officially out test. in late November, around. Uh, what, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Week commencing the 26th is when the pressing plant has told me that I'm going to get a phone call to confirm the exact delivery date of that week. So on approval of the pressing, so I'll check the pressing, make sure it's all okay. Bang, it's going out. Um, and of course, for uh, all listeners out there, it's available uh, on Rave Radio on uh, yeah Rave Radio Records dot com. Correct. Yeah, man, it's on Rave Radio Records and the website is www.raveradiorecords.com. Available also on uh, Bandcamp or not? Not on Bandcamp. On, um, on the, it's on the website on. only. Yeah, just on the website, and um, so oh. yeah, it's just on there. I felt I know I wanted to move from Bandcamp, um, so yeah, got got that up there with other products. So I was able to sort of add merchandise on there, event tickets, and so just it's just one one stop shop really for, for anything CTH. And it was a very good thinking uh, setting up a website. Very good thinking, seriously. Uh, it's yeah, helpful. man. Yeah, it's definitely helpful. I mean, what it doesn't do is it's not a 
a collaborative tool so you know it's not like band the good use of Bandcamp is at least you can you can follow people as you know and you can explore and find new things and uh, you know you can you've got like a messaging system for your fans so there are some definite benefits for Bandcamp but I think if you've got a good if you've got a product um, and you know you push it push it out there you should get it to the right people um, but Bandcamp has got its place totally agree So, uh, moving to Chapter Tri Unity, one year old uh, act, full of innovation, and uh, some weeks ago, a dream came true, right? Uh, you've made a, an absolutely amazing cover, fair play, seriously, to the classic uh, Jimmy J and Cruelty Six Days. And uh, yeah, tell me about your deal with Lunacy and uh, how you guys uh, reacted to his calling, let's say. Uh, I'm yeah. curious to listen, I all was, of us actually. Yeah, I was absolutely overwhelmed and over the moon when I spoke to Chris. I mean, I've obviously spoken to Chris Lindsay um, quite a bit with other projects like the remixes that he was on, uh, Rave Radio Records number four. And um, in the process of putting together the album, CTH album, um, we were chatting anyway about um, you know his other projects, and he wanted us to get involved in in this particular one for Remix Records. Um, when when Chris sort of said it to us, we were like, "Wow, okay." First first thoughts are, Fran, can you belt it out? How 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 good can you belt one of these out? So we literally just played all of them. To Fran, obviously, Fran knew the vast majority of them that. Uh, Lunacy gave us, he gave us about five or six tracks to choose from, all of his classics, and um, Six Days just stuck out a little bit, it's a bit of a personal favourite of mine, that one and the remixes from back in 94, 95, uh, yeah. and um, with, with me and my, my my older brother, we absolutely love that track, it's, 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 you know, for its own right, so from that I kind of had the connection and, and Fran was keen for it, uh, and we listened to how the original was sung, and what Chris did to the lyric to speed it up, mm. um, and we we sort of and denied about how we'd do it, and Chris was just really open about he didn't want a remix because he knows that with what we're trying to do and what Fran's natural to is just to actually sing rather than um, you know try and try and try and do too much of a remix of the original vocals. So we re-sung the vocals, um, but also Fran added two extra verses, one in the first uh, sort of section of, of lyrics and then one in the second section of lyrics, which aren't actually on the original, uh. which was our own little additive to it. And then um, we, we just went, went full put into, into how we wanted it to go. I mean, when I think back to it, I'm, I'm really happy with how it came out. 
Um, I think it, in hindsight, I, I would have liked to have made it a bit harder. Um, how long did it, uh, how long did it take the whole thing? The whole thing, if I think back to it, me and Jim je- generally get into the studio for a minimum four hours a session. Mm-hmm. And if I sort of average it at about five hours a session, we probably did about seven or eight sessions uh, to get it how we wanted it. Nice. Um, yeah, I'd probably say, you know, probably about 35, 30, 35 hours, something like that, to, to do it. I th- uh, but probably more because Jim Jim will work on some of the mastering like when I'm not there. So we'll put together the stab arrangement together and we'll, we'll work out the sounds that we want to use together and then he'll just play and play and play it, uh, getting the sound how he wants it. So probably more, more together, but together probably about 30. But, but it took certainly less than six days because of your passion and excitement uh, sorting out such a, a big cover, I'd say. Not not a yeah, remix, yeah. it's a cover. Yeah, yeah, we should have called, called, called it the 35 hour mix or something like that. Uh, uh, yeah, man. Some, is it uh, early enough to talk about the Tri Unity album? Uh, well, it's funny you should say it because it's, there's still a question mark over it. But yeah, why not? I think. From where we're at at the moment, you know, Try Unity, we've created, we've, we've produced four tracks that are unreleased. Three of them are on a dub plate that I had cut the other week. Um, one of them isn't because we just need to adjust the baseline on it. We didn't get it in time for, we didn't sort it out in time for um, recording the hardcore last week. Mm. So we created four tracks. And now we're at a kind of junction that do we release it as an EP? Or do we look at moving forward and maybe doing an album or doing an album and some remixes on it as a digital? I'm not sure about releasing an album um, uh, on vinyl. Um, I think I'm not sure about that, but we'll see. You know, I think I think uh, if it was going to be an album, it would be a digital album, and then there might be a couple of EPs to go with it. Or on a um, CD, hmm? maybe. Yeah, or a CD, that's what I mean, a CD, yeah, mm-hmm. CD, um, and then maybe some, some EPs, some small run EPs to go with it. Any uh, dream collaboration? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, Let's say, actually, uh, who, what type of producers uh, you rate these days? What producers? Well, I'm absolutely, from a sort of simplistic grassroots level, I love what what Jed Ed Edai Ed, Edai Ed, it's his new name Edai Edai <laughs> down to the DJ Edai I'll put really? that to him um, the DJ Jedi stuff is, is is just sort of you know you know what you're getting with with Ed stuff and uh. um, I, I love what he does uh, and then I love a lot of what Sistek and Sarice do um, I think they've got a really good ear I think their composition is fantastic with um You know their chord structures. Yeah. Dragon um, Technicals back then, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, there's, there's loads of people out there. I mean, Inner Core's doing some really good stuff as well. He's done stuff on like Night Night Force, got his own uh, Inner Core project imprint as well. Um, you know, pretty similar to, to Jed, Jedi in some respects, just really, really raw and and uh, and to it. You know, to, to the original. I'd like Try Unity hasn't really done anything jungle techno, and I think that we uh. we, we do something really good with the jungle techno track. Um, you know, a bit like um, Unity, you know, on Basement Records, that that kind of vibe. You get Fran sort of Ron Well style. Yeah, you know, the the original Basement Records mm. sort of stuff. Um, So maybe maybe a jungle techno thing could be good. I love I love what Worldwide Epidemic does as well. Um, sil- silky stuff is 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 fantastic. His composition and um, sequencing is is, is 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 brilliant. And he takes a lot of inspiration from from, from Ron Wells and, and and how those techniques were done back in the day. And yeah, so there's loads of people out there. Um, and I speak to loads of them all the time nice one so full of uh, passion uh, hunger and uh, dreams and plans of course for uh, hardcore any closing message uh, to the Night Force Radio and Gen X crew 
Um, any advice, no. any anything, you know. Why uh, why why someone actually should attend to the next calling the hardcore? Why? The reason. The big reason, the main reason. Well, uh, calling the hardcore is just it's open doors to anyone um, who is uh, either into underground hardcore rave or isn't open to the new stuff or just wants to see what it's about. Um, you know, it's proper, it's a proper rave. And if you want a proper underground experience, which is audio visual, um, then, then calling the hardcore might be for you, you know. It, we're not, we're not doing anything particularly different, you know, there's great raves have been happening for years, you know, just on and off, I take loads of inspiration from places like Raindance, what Raindance did at like the Jerome SE1 back in the early noughties was, was phenomenal, you know, and some of the illegal sound systems that used to play on and stuff, some of the raves that, that I used to play at, um, just the most underground Sort of vibes ever so that's just what what we're trying to trying to recreate and, and trying to create really if you want if you like it hard and underground and audio visual then it's, it's probably something for you but on your last question night force radio leading the way mate night force all the way long long longest running label um you know untouchable uh and i love love what what what, what night force is all about Brilliant, uh, Mr. Parcel, massive respect, and of course more to follow on the video interview on my next uh, episode of Globas alongside uh, Francesca and Jim, the other members of Tri Unity, and a very essential interview we had the backstage on uh, Calling the Hardcore Volume 4. Uh, massive the, big ups. The, gin, the, gin, the Ginger Twins.
Rave Radio Records returned with a brand new final release, calling the hardcore volume 1, 12 fresh lammers on a limited edition 12-inch triple pack vinyl, following a frenzy hardcore direction with the likes of LSD, Keezy, Damaging, Dave Skywalker, Tri-Unity, Sistek and Serrise, DJ Gentai, Innercore, Ron Wells, Black Mask, Plastics, Nervous and Anxious, and a standing record sleep artwork by the legendary Junior Tomlin. Hardcore is calling, so don't waste your time. Order your copies now on www.raveradiorecords.com Calling the hardcore, hardcore is calling and uh, I think that we should take some overtime to close tonight's showcase, special showcase, ideally and uh, how it deserves actually. What do you think? Turn it up a little bit louder if you can. Last few bits of uh, Gen X show. Let's go! Saturday night from Athens, Greece. Just we want more. Bring the family, what community? Go to Napoli, Tom and Lucy. Cause we're calling the hardcore. So yeah, massive pickups. Uh, yes. And we are calling the hardcore. Like huge to respect to those, uh, to this amazing trio hardcore. of uh, Sammy Parcel, Francesca Parcel, uh, Jim Wins, Jim Sima. Try to do Rave Radio Records, uh, calling the hardcore. The hardcore. The Frenzy Brighton's uh, crowd. We are cool. Amazing night and for the double experience and highly recommended guys for uh, the fifth and uh, forthcoming calling the hardcore. We are calling the hardcore. Yes, yes. Here we go. Big up also to the man like DJ Gentai. We are cool in the hardcore. Watch out his special release on Jedi recordings with uh, Night Force remixes. I played one on the background of the interview from uh, Antu B. I can't reveal it now, I think, huh? The dogs go down! Time to party, everybody! Big up to the humble and uh... Time to pop, cause we got the passion! Hardcore select a Keezy! Break the family, what community does in Appley Tone Unity? We are calling the hardcore! And we are calling the hardcore! Pick up to the Malek C3 
love xenophobia. Rush in the house. Build the rush. 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 Catch me up uh, sometime soon again on Night Force Radio. I won't say anything. Xenophobia. So for more, uh, look at music.blogspot.com, strictly musical blog. Have a wonderful night from Athens. Καλό βράδυ από Αθήνα σε όλους.